Hey everybody, it's Dave from Projector People. I am so hyped to show you guys uh, what we have today. Uh, it is Fun Friday here at Projector People and we have our hands on an Epson Home Cinema 5040 UB projector. Uh, this is the talk of the town right now. Uh, in case you are not aware, this is a step up, a big step up from one of our top selling uh, home theater projectors of all time, the Epson Home Cinema 5030, which was released in October 2013. So we have had some new home cinema projectors come in uh, since that time, but uh, nothing probably as dramatic an upgrade as we are seeing uh, this time around with Epson. Uh, this is a, we're gonna get deep into the details with this projector, but to give you a quick overview, this is uh, what Epson is labeling as a 4K enhancement uh, projector with HDR capabilities. So we'll talk a little bit about what that means in just a moment, but let me give you a quick recap of basically the changes of this model versus a 5030. Uh, it has a whole new exterior casing. This is, when you compare it against the 5030, and I think we have some footage from that from yesterday, you will notice that this is uh, substantially larger, not twice as big or anything like that, but a few inches larger on each side, uh, and it definitely seems heftier. Um, this is something that you're going to probably want to install versus put on a shelf. And the other thing about it is uh, Epson has chosen to go with a kind of a blend-in, totally blend-in design versus the tuxedo style of the 5030, which featured a black kind of front, which was nice and looked good uh, next to maybe a Stormtrooper. Um, but this is very much, Epson is wanting you to focus on the image and not on the projector itself. And I can say from uh, shooting this thing yesterday and today, this unit is very quiet. Um, even in its high brightness mode, uh, you'll barely notice it's there. Especially if you have it installed in your ceiling, you'll probably never hear this thing going. Uh, again, the front vents are where all the heat's going to go out. Um, this thing's been running for several hours. Not really hot at all, just kind of gen generally warm. The other thing about this projector is it features a whole new optical engine. Uh, it's still a three LCD projector, uh, but it does have a new lens versus the, the Fuji lens, I think, that was on the 5030. And it requires a new lens simply because it needs to show crisper resolution at those higher, res uh, those higher native inputs of 4K. Um, and we will show you some of that content in just a little bit. Uh, we'll talk about the stuff on the back in just a second. Uh, but the other features that are kind of a big step uh, up for this 5040 are the fact that everything is powered. Whereas on the 5030 you had lens shift and you had focus and of course you had zoom. Uh, those were all manual features. So if you wanted to switch between... Uh, you know, different format types of, uh, you know, the CinemaScope versus 16 by 9. Um, it was very manual. I had to get up and change that all the time. Now you have powered lens memory, and you have powered zoom, you have powered focus, um, and powered lens shift, which is expansive. And we'll show that again once we start showing the projector. So uh, I'll let Danny take a quick look at that. It, this is a, a, a beautiful unit. Um, and it is fresh in our hands. We've only had it for a day. So let me talk about some of the other things that Epson has improved on this unit itself. So it has an increased lumen brightness uh, up from 2400 lumens to 2500 lumens, which is probably not going to be super noticeable to you um, if you're already on 5030. But again, you're not buying this just because of a lumen increase. You're buying this because of all the additional features it offers. Um, and it has a, uh, a market increase in contrast. Um, whereas the 5030 had a 600,000 to one contrast, uh, Epson is touting this as a million to one contrast. And that's mostly because of the changes on the dynamic iris. Uh, and I can honestly say that we were all blown away uh, by the black levels in this projector yesterday. And we have some footage that we'll show you guys. So if you're using this in a dedicated home theater space where you have absolute control of your lighting, you will be astounded by the image quality and the cinema richness and immersion factor that this projector allows uh, in that type of setting. So uh, let's take a look at the back. Okay, great. Um, so what we have here is we have uh, your HDMI inputs 
and uh, your 4K signal is going to go into input one. So you're going to need a HDMI 2.2 uh, connection. And if you're going to watch uh, HDR content, it needs to be 2.0A um, uh, compatible. So and you need to make sure your receivers or your uh, AV gear uh, is compatible with that to get the, the full uh, you know, experience, uh, so to speak. And then you have your other HDMI 2, which will accept a, a 1080p signal. Uh, you will not be able to run 4K content through there. You have your USBs, which are mostly for factory updates and service. Uh, and then you have your LAN connections, your PC connections, and your RS-232 and your triggers. Um, so it's nice and sleek. This is not going to be everything to everybody, but again, this is a home theater unit and it knows its, its place. So this is, all this stuff is going to fit really, really well. Uh, and then over here on the side, move this around and just ignore the plugs. We have everything plugged in. We don't want to really mess with the connections we have set up. Um, so can you see that there, Danny? So there's a little side panel, all right? So it's nice and closed, uh, kind of like, uh, I'm not sure if the 5030 has this. I believe it does. Um, and you have your power unit. Uh, I'm not sure if that's your source. Actually, I actually haven't tried that. And then you have your menu options in case you don't have your remote control. Uh, and then all your other ways to kind of management your lens settings. Uh, so when you push on the lens, that gives you your powered zoom, your powered uh, focus, and your lens shift, and then your escape button. That's your, your uh, kind of um, enter, enter key. Let me show you while you're standing there, let me show you the remote. So I typically don't talk about remotes, um, just some, you know, because it's kind of boring, it's a remote. Uh, but there are some really cool features on this remote. Uh, the biggest of which is the HDMI link uh, capability. So uh, what this does is allow you to basically sync this remote with other uh, audio or video sources uh, in your, your home connection. I'll, I'll give you an example. We are hooking this up to a Sony 4K player right now. The remote went dead on that player and there were no external controls. I was able to push the HDMI link here and it automatically imported all the controls for that player into this remote so that I only have one remote that I need to use to actually play the content, to uh, peruse the content. Um, so I'm sure it probably works the same way with other units, maybe even your AVR, like your receiver, but definitely Blu-ray players, maybe your cable box. So experiment with it when you get it. Uh, it's a very cool feature and it's surprisingly handy. Another thing we have is picture in picture, which for some of you guys may be, you know, a, a big deal, uh, especially if you're watching sports and you want to flip between the channels and know when your other sports team is on um, or commercials. Uh, that's a nice feature to have there. Quick flip between your HDMIs, all your sources, and then easy access to your lens focus uh, and your color modes and your image enhancements, which we will go into depth on there. And then you have your lens memory, your frame to relation, which we'll talk about in a little bit. And then of course you have, uh, you can dial in and really calibrate, uh, you know, to your heart's content, um, your color schemes, uh, everything that we have here. And that's basically, and then you have a pattern uh, for setting everything up, making sure it's all nicely aligned. And of course we have 3D, but we're not gonna talk too much about 3D because we're not gonna show any 3D content. So that is the remote in a pinch, and it's nice, and then you have a little light that shows up if it's dark. So anyway. Yes. Okay, great. Now we're going to show you some of the 5040 in action. Um, so I know you guys probably have a lot of questions, some of which we'll be able to answer, some of which uh, may have to come at a later time. But um, I want to first and foremost show off the zoom capabilities. This is, I believe it's 2.1 zoom. Um, right now I have it zoomed all the way out, and it's about 12 feet away from the screen. So let me go ahead and zoom in. Uh, and again, this is all powered zoom. So let me, and you will see that this is fantastic for placement flexibility. Uh, and let's bring that all the way up. Okay, perfect. And then I will show you also the lens shift. So this is going down. And we'll put on the screen what the actual amount of lens shift is. I do not have it right in front of me. Again, there's no manual activity needed here. This is all done by a remote. But that is, that is pretty good. So that's your vertical lens shift. And move that 
this dialed in here. Bring that a little bit. And we'll go left and right. So that should be more than enough if you accidentally go over a couple inches in your installation and uh, you need to kind of move that back and forth without resorting, resorting to uh, kind of image wrecking keystoning, um, which is fantastic. You don't want to have to mess with that with a uh, home cinema projector. All right, let me show you some content that we shot uh, straight from an iPhone uh, 6S that is capable of shooting 4K. So let me go to that. Great. Now this is only about 30 seconds of footage. We just shot it outside of our building today. This is sunny Florida. Uh, ignore kind of the motion. This is all handheld. We just wanted to get some 4K straight from the source into this projector uh, so that we could talk about it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to freeze frame on a section right about here. Okay, so uh, again, this is 4K from a video source, and we're going to confirm that by taking a look at the signal down here, info, and 3840 by 2160. And then we're going to go back up here to the image image enhancement and we're going to turn this off so that we just see okay there's your signal 4k signal with no uh, edge enhancement image enhancement 4k enhancement whatever it is um, you can tell that everything's a little bit blurry pay close attention to the bark in the middle and the side uh, with the little wavy little moss leaves so we're going to take that from zero and we're going to Go all the way up to five, just for a dramatic effect. This looks astounding. This looks fantastic. Um, it does not look too sharp, like we talked about before. It's still blurry in the background. Uh, now, again, it depends on a scene. Uh, I'm sure if, this, if these were people and you're in a dramatic scene, this may be too much. But if you're in a nature uh, type of environment where you're watching nature shows, this may look incredible. It does look incredible. We'll put it back in a more moderate uh, preset 3 and let this kind of continue to play. But even here, uh, this is a 4K signal in 4K enhancement mode, and it looks great. It really does look great. So it's doing some stuff here with the contrast, the edging, um, and it's not affecting the blurriness or the overall pixel sharpness of everything else. It's just, it's a, a really crisp image. So. Hopefully that comes across well in the video. It's kind of hard to, to show that. Uh, I understand compressed. So again, I'll just pause it right here. Uh, this is a great scene to show because a lot of times this gets blurry. And there we go. And while it's paused there, I'll do the same thing one more time with image enhancement up here. Uh, real quick while we're in the image, you can obviously dial in the brightness, the contrast, everything is set uh, you know, these are default modes right out of the box. We have it running at, you know, full brightness. Uh, we have the auto iris at high speed. Uh, one thing I'll say about the iris is that it's barely noticeable at all. When we're in dark scenes, it doesn't, it is not real noisy as it opens and closes, uh, which is sometimes typical of an iris, uh, but this is really nice. You have your ability to set your aspect here. Uh, you can blank out the screen. 
and then the signal, uh, we talked about that, but I'll show you real again. And your dynamic range, and then your image processing, which I'm not, uh, that may be uh, something that you want to, I'm not sure which scenarios you would set that to fast in, but uh, I'm sure more detail will come out. Maybe Art on particular reviews will have some information on that, on particular central. Um, and then you have a keystone. If you choose to use that or need to use that, we recommend not. Uh, you can uh, connect it to your network, your LAN, and reset everything else. So uh, everything that you need is kind of right at your fingertips. So that is the Epson 5040 in a nutshell. Uh, we hope you guys have enjoyed this. And if you have any questions, make sure to check back on our site regularly uh, as we will have updated content. We'll have photos, uh, comparisons against the 5030. And uh, we can say wholeheartedly after all of us have viewed it that this is 100% a, a dramatic step up from the 5030, well worth the money. It also comes in a, a, a wireless model, which is the 5040 UBE. And, uh, you know, I wish I had some HDR content to show you how remarkable it is when we saw it in action and demo. Uh, that is really probably the most dramatic piece of it, and I apologize for not having that, but I'm sure you'll see that content coming out. And when we, when we have it available, we will upload that as well. But we wanted to get this to you first and uh, foremost so you guys can actually see this projector in action and know what it's capable of, and we can say that we are super pleased with it. If you have any questions, please give us a call at our site. And thank you for watching.